13 February 2023, Monday. Welcome back, MAO with Cal. Right, S&P to see 4,800 this year. Oh gosh, S&P have been staying below 4,002 for a long while, but now Fund Strat Tom Lee gave a very big call. He says that 4,008 is coming this year. Fundstrat Global Advisor, Co-Founder and Head of Research, CNBC Contributor, you name it, he has it. And a very incredible hairstyle recently. All I can say is, guys, everybody's entitled to their view. And let us hear later on a long video, four minutes long, on what he has to share. Pretty interesting stuff. But once again, disclaimer apply as usual. And thank you, Ames, for the kind sponsorship. Now, let's recap what happened last Friday. Well, the Dow Jones lost 170 points and the S&P 500 and Nasdaq post their worst week since December last year. Okay. Now, the thing is this, the Nasdaq lost 76 points, S&P up by 8.94 points and the Dow Jones up by 169. So, uh, I'm so sorry, it's higher, not lower. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, the thing is this, the point is that Tesla went down by 5% last Friday. Uh, it's back below the $200 mark, back down. And we have some seemingly a bit of uh, lesser selling on Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. So that's a good sign. But the thing is this, let's take a look right now. The investors digested most of the recent interest rate hike issue, economic data, and the recent commentary from the Fed Reserve speakers. So it seems that everybody say, okay, we have interest rate hiking potentially. We have... Um, Data not so good, but I think things are okay. All right, that's what people are feeling right now. There's all a mixed signal, and that's why volatility is up. And of course, with 70% of the SMB companies reporting, and most of them has beat analysts and uh, expectation. So therefore, it seems that all is good. So that's the reason why US seem to be pretty confident and they shot down the fourth high attitude um, object as lawmakers demand more information. So apparently, this is the fourth I unidentified um, object. Now, a, if a FYI, uh, the first the first one is from China, okay? The remaining itself, I'm not really clear on that, okay? So they have sent F-16 up to the sky and they have shot down the fourth object. So again, we don't know what is this object going around and uh, some internet ongoing says that now China is going to shoot down something from the sky of their own because apparently another unidentified object is actually in China right now. Oh gosh, okay. Not too sure what's going on, but this is pretty scary. Now because of that, US has sanctioned six companies, okay, six tech companies for supporting the spy balloon program. So these companies, the name was not mentioned, but when I dig a dig is out, right, I realized that, oh my God, US has sanctioned a lot, a lot of things, including a country, <laughs> all right? So this is the, um, the thing that I got from internet, and this shows that uh, more than 600 pages of companies and individuals all right, are being sanctioned. So this is uh, the list is very long. I'm not going to go over there. But does it help the market? Will not be a bit serious right now. So traders, you need to be careful because things can get pretty ugly if this continue. Yep. Now, Google employee criticized the CEO all right, because of the rush and botch announcement of the GPT competitor bot. Now, we all know that things grew up very badly back then. And of course, that wiped up nearly 20% uh, of it itself. And of course, the thing is this, the question is, why would the CEO take such a big stand of doing this when they are not ready? We all know that the main reason is because that they have to deliver ahead of Microsoft event in the following day. And because of that, it failed so badly, that's why. And of course, I believe that hate is going to roll. And rather than they get it right, might as well just dump it on the CEO himself. All right, so that's what is happening right now. Okay, so this is what we are seeing. Let me just give you a moment here. There's some little issue of my technical side. Oh gosh, let me give you a moment. Okay, flashing a little bit of time. Let's do this. Right, apparently some of the employees didn't even aware of the event. And some one of the presenter forgot to bring the phone. <laughs> my God to require for the demo. So that's how bad it is right now in Google. So not too sure what's happening at Google, but all these text volume, all right? And this is not gonna help. Right, now Turkey detained building contractors as an earthquake death hits 33,000. Now, obviously, when you look at the way the uh, building pancake on each other is all right, it's very, very questionable. So apparently now the Turkish justice uh, official has targeted more than 100 people and they are allegedly involved in the shady and illegal construction. And of course, um, the death toll have hit 33,000 and more than 90,000 people were injured in this disaster. So 
many of them actually contractors say that they really follow the law but then again the question is why the building slump on the sides or pancake the downward onto residents is a big big question mark and of course um while some people say that it's because they're trying to put someone to be the 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 take the rap right but again this sort of thing is hard to say because things is down right now what do you want it's death right now right and of course investors are going to be having their eyes on the consumer price index this week this is going to be a big one so apparently right in a converse uh, conversation at the economic club of washington last week all right jerome power says that the inflation has came down and although there's a long way to go but still very good chance of a 25 basis point hike and of course um there are more people saying that right likelihood okay the cpi data will be better than expected and of course that will means that we can have no rate hike coming in so we all know that the market now is looking at 6.2 percent from the previous 6.5 any better 6.2 the market gonna jump but the thing is this will it happen well i think it is possible when you are telling me that the bls is going to change the way it compute the cpi data so if that is going to be from the bureau of labor statistics if you don't change the numbers to make it a bit better why not so who knows you can see six percent right who knows because well, this is all very possible because if they need to win they'll win it in any way anyhow so guys don't bet on it guys numbers can be better than expected yeah now tom lee definitely because of that is very confident and he says that now with a very predictable federal reserve is allow east to for further upside so let's hear what tom lee has to say uh, about it it's a four minute video i think it's very important let's watch it through all right let's go Peter Tom Lee of Fundstrat Global Advisors, right here on set with me. It's good to see you. Welcome back. Great to see you, Scott. That's the headline we're going to start with, 4,800 by year, and I want you to tell me how. Um, I think if I had to say uh, market internals, it looks like it's baked in the cake in the sense that markets that make this much progress by day 26, uh, 16 out of 17 have been over double-digit returns and with an average gain of 26%. So I think that the market's revealed its hand. From a fundamental perspective, I think the narrative is inflation is becoming less of a risk to the upside. And from a Fed's perspective, that's a more predictable Fed. I think that allows volatility to come down. I think multiples expand and earnings hold up nicely. And we get, uh, you know, investors buying stocks, buying the dip again. Okay, so I love what the, the show before us did right off the top. The way they put the debate, don't fight the Fed versus don't fight the tape. The Fed is still highly engaged, okay? You obviously are saying don't fight the tape. The signs in the market to this point at the beginning part of this year tell you that none of the other stuff matters anymore. Inflation's coming down enough. There are too many good signs in the market to go back now. Uh, it would be unprecedented, Scott. And just in terms of internals, because we've had such a breadth expansion and the market's producing this much upside in such a short time, it's never happened in a bear market. But when investors say don't fight the Fed, I think that they're forgetting that there's there's not just Fed is not a binary mode. You know, Fed's not just cutting or they're hiking. There's also the Fed that's trying to gradually and be predictable in monetary policy. That's the Fed of the 90s. Uh, the Fed was raising rates really for almost 10 years and the stock market had double digit gains. So I think predictable rate increases is not the same as the Fed wanting financial conditions to tighten to lead to a recession. What if they're still unpredictable, right? That jobs report was pretty hot. What happens if the CPI is as well? What happens if subsequent inflation reads are not as good as we think they're going to be? I feel like things are still a little uncertain to be, as Jamie Dimon would say the other day, it's too early to declare victory. Uh, you're right. It's too early to declare victory, but there's a difference between the Fed reacting to every data point versus a Fed that wants to be predictable. It took three good inflation reports before the Fed even started to use the word disinflation. But from December to February, they went from zero citations of disinflation to 13. So if the February CPI report is a little bit hot, which we don't expect, we actually think it's going to be another downside read. So that'll be four to five consecutive months. That's a predictable Fed. The, we had one somewhat hot jobs report. If the Fed starts raising rates there, that's not a that's a Fed that's reactive to data points. Do they, aren't they, but they're they're telling they're telling us to this point, aren't they, that they're going to be data dependent now? They're not on some predetermined path like some in the market had feared they were at one point. 
They actually suggest they're going to be data dependent. Uh, yeah, but there's a difference between data dependent and data reactive. I think the one thing that's going to be important for the, is for the Fed's reaction function to make sense. I think most of us would agree a lot of the economic data that they cite, CPI and jobs reports, is backwards looking. I mean, for instance, high frequency data showed inflation was weakening since June, but the first good inflation report wasn't until October, and then it tanked since then. The Fed hadn't even talked about progress on inflation until February of this year, another four months later. I think if they're going to start to talk about jobs reports as the reason to move monetary policy, it is a little backwards looking because jobs is the last thing that reacts I to mean, monetary policy. I mean, it may be policy. backwards, but they're clearly focused on cracking the labor market, right? All right. So, wow. You can see that the S&P 500 is trading at this uh, 4,100 on average. And now this uh, uh, Tom Lee is looking at uh, 4,008. Now, I agree to a certain part of his sharing. And I think that it is possible that he can be right. But, um, well, as I say once again, I don't think that we are out of the woods yet because whatever it says, the interest rate factor is still one big one. And even if the Federal Reserve don't pivot immediately, the drag of a few months of 5% per month will definitely hit some of the business, especially, especially on the BOJ side. So if you look at the US dollar right now, right, this is my own personal chart, you can see very clearly that US dollar has formed a base at about 100 level. And I told you guys that once it's stable 101, it will be a buy up. And truth be told, the dollar has moved up and now it's trading at 103.76. So I already given you my view. I am pretty sure that we will see 105 probably by end of the month. And that will probably hit the gold market a bit, a bit more and uh, some of the commodities will be affected and when that happens to the equity market will take some a bit of breather especially the nasdaq counters okay so that is my view on the dollar and at the moment now right the fed fund rates are all looking at about 5.1 to 5.2 so it's pretty clear that the market is expecting further rate hike uh in the march and probably in the april period we'll see how it goes from there and let's see how you can use this information to make money from the market now one thing to note right this is something extra the u.s securities and exchange commission came out a report on 7 february and they were ask, actually telling people to be more careful on certain products example like real estates like pressure metals and other commodities including crypto assets okay now take note on the date it was the 7th of february when this report came out and coincidentally that was the same day whereby the bitcoin actually slumped so it, not too sure is it because of this particular report i got, I got this from a youtuber and i think it's pretty cool so maybe this is a good way to tell people that you know what bitcoin might be going down further who knows all right so Bitcoin, in my perspective, I still buy it only at 12,000. I know that I've been saying this for some time and I missed the run-up. The run I think it's fine. I still think that Bitcoin should be going down to 12,000 for a good buy. Now, of course, if he doesn't, then next year, Bitcoin will be a big one. Likely, it will be going higher. And that's where that maybe you can be buying at a higher price, but I'm happy with that, okay? So this is something to just um, take note of that Bitcoin. So... The thing is this, well, I know that Tom Lee is a very reputable analyst and stuff, but I want to ask him this question is this. The hardship withdrawal is rising. The Empower Retirement saw the number of 401k saver making emergency withdrawal jumps 24% in the 12 months through September 30th. So which means that it's like our CPF, people quickly go and draw it because they need money desperately right now. So why? If the money is, if the business or economy is doing well, why do you need to do that? So all these things speaks for itself with the interest rate still going up, with the claiming down of risky assets, with the continue of the housing price going higher, and of course, at the same time, uh, we have the uh, earnings not do well. All these tells me that you just have to be more careful than not, yeah? Optimistic is good, all right? Data reliant is good, but I think that we can go slow, all right? So let's take a look at the market now and see what we have for you for today. Now, for the Dow Jones today, before we go into that, the Dow Jones today is pretty clear. It's still on the red side. Today, we have an Omega Day, whereby the opening price and the day high is the same. And um, now it's trading at 33,850. Uh, there's a very heavy stack right now, MA30 and MLP at uh, 33,854. 
to 33,808. If the market failed to stay above MLP, 33,808, I believe there'll be some selling back to 33,653, all right? Now, KSI and KRW both are red still, so that gave me the reason why I still think the market will be taking down um, more downside. But of course, you can see very clearly there is a very strong support right now here. Oops, okay, let me just play it again. There's a very strong support at this uh, BNB um, level. Okay, it's somewhere around here. The BNB support level, we see on Friday, the market came down and rebounded. That's approximately 33,600. So if the market really need to go down, it has to lose 33,600 for it to go down all the way, which coincidentally is a BNB extension, minus one time one at 32,942, which coincide with my KCB at 32,953. So usually if the market really comes down and break below this level, the market can really come down to this point. So traders 32,942, take note. Upside can be all the way here, which is approximately 34,265. Yeah, this is the upside queue. For the NASDAQ, let's take a look right now. The NASDAQ today, um, pretty clear that we have a bit of a downdraft at the moment. And the MLP at 12,351 is a very strong resistance at the moment. Uh, but it's both away above MA30 and MA200. So, all right. The only thing is this, the KSI is green, but my KRW have turned red. So that means that there should be some selling presence very soon. Now you can see the screen is flickering right now. 12,133 is a very critical support for today. Watch out for that. Uh, upside wow will be 12,552, okay? S&P 500. S&P 500 yesterday did a do on Friday did a doji. So we have a DJDD set up. KSI is green. KRW is red. So mix back. So as long as the market stays above 4.088, which coincides with the MLP today, the market should be all right. Now earlier when it broke below 4.088, let me just show you a quick one. Earlier when it broke 4.088, right, the next target it will be going was the MA, right? So apparently the market broke below 4.088. You can see it's selling come down. But once it hit the KTR minus 2 level, a bomb appeared. That means the market likely will reverse. And true be told, the market reversed all the way, but it missed now the OP. So the thing is this, 4.088 is MLP, very critical. If the market loses that, the selling will bring it back down again, all right? So that is the uh, the S&P 500. So traders, take note of all these numbers. Downside factor, 4.059 or 4.038, all right? So that is the uh, S&P 500. Let's look at DAX right now. DAX is open. And DAX now has, uh, let's take a look. DAX has traded up above the pivot one one five three two four. And it went to the high of 15378. Okay. The high is 15377.7. So it's just only about the same point. And now it retraced. That means it couldn't break above the uh, MLP. So if the market breaks below OP, then the market may come down to 15,236. But FYI, both KSI and KRW both are positive. So the market can still be going higher. Okay. The upside is sell right likelihood. We may even see 14,000. 15,438, all right? Now, for the Nikkei, let's take a look right now. The Nikkei has came down, broke below the BNB support at 27,392. And, but then again, you can see heavily supported by the MA30 and MA200. So once it hit 27,279, it rebounded. And now it's still below MLP. KSI and KRW both are in a mixed bag, one red, one cyan. So that's why we have a mixed signal at the moment. Now the consolidation on Nikkei has been ongoing right now for the last uh, five, six days at about 600 point series. So if you ask me, only if the market breaks below the BNB support level at 27,380 approximately, then you'll come down to 26,996. Upside wise, we can still see 27,778. Now do not today is a inverse pivot day. So that's why the market, once it hit the pivot one, couldn't re go down, it rejected and go back up again. So this is the typical sign of uh, this uh, inverse pivot day. All right. And uh, one of you have that. Let's look at Hang Seng today. And Hang Seng, well, today Hang Seng has opened lower in the morning. Then after that, it went down, missed my target of 20,780 by about 20 points. And then it recovered very strongly above 20,779. Sorry, 20,977. Uh, what's the reason? Because China rebounded pretty ferociously. Look at it. Now, this is my trend line that I have for the long, long time. And one, two, three, four, four days in a row, the China stock market basically took my trend line pretty seriously. So, of course, um, well, as long as China A50 continue to go up to 13,800 plus, 
we can see going back to 14.1 but the thing is this look at the way it stopped at the trend line is really incredible and remarkable if the market ever closed below the trend line the selling can bring it down all the way to 13,200 and that will likely bring Hang Seng lower but at the moment now as long as Hang Seng stays below 21,302 the MLP I think we should be somewhere around here for time being okay all right so with that we ended with all the indices let's look at the crude oil price right now crude oil this morning opened higher but trade lower right now ksi green supposed to have buyers but krw stay red so it makes back now today crude oil gap up but failed to stay above and now have broke below the pivot two at 78 dollars and 88 cent so usually when the market stays below op and below pivot two the market should be coming down to the next target which is between 78 63 to 7820 now 63 has been done so the next target should be here the ma um 30 level at 7820 all right the bmb rl level will be here at 78 78 72 so if the crude oil do pull back for whatever reason we can see 76 41 all right so traders watch out for this now we have crude oil definitely we need to have some gold let's take a look at gold right now let's take a look now go today oops so just clear up the screen a little bit all right go today is a djdd means a directional day so hey, wait a minute it's take weekly chart my bad okay so still the same djdd day and go is now trading downwards now go high is 1864 uh, 1866 sorry my bad and that really hits for pivot one very nicely let me show you the chart right now you can see beautiful the market opens right here at 1864 came down to ktr minus one beautifully bomb appear bang recover but once it hit pivot one it couldn't stay up too high too long and then pull back once it go below op and below mlp no matter what you tell me it's a sell right so the market really came off so thing is this for gold as i said if the dollar is going to push up most likely we will see the gold going down further so one it uh one is 58 is actually the bnb support level so once you lose 1846 the next target could be as low as 1827 and i mentioned to you guys 1827 to 1814 will be the level that i'm looking to buy some gold so let's see whether candy be manifested right for crude oil sorry for this uh silver silver also djdd and of course now is trading slightly below the bnb support level hence therefore if we stay below 21 dollars and 91 cent the next target can be as low as 21 23 which happened to be uh coincide with the kcb at 21 22 so this is going to be interesting but ksi and kcx shows that the selling is going to continue so traders just take note of all this information and of course the last two will be bitcoin and uh, ethereum let me just bring in bitcoin bitcoin as i mentioned earlier likelihood there should be some more selling to bring out the 20,891 area ksi and kcx are both negative so selling is very very possible for ethereum yes broke below the bnb support level extension too so more likely it's going to be heading towards 1455 it's a fresh chocolate bar together with 1425 anytime around this area about 1425 to 1400 you can consider to buy some if you are an ethereum fan but for me both ksi and kcx are down so it means that the selling will be coming in so that's the reason why when recently when the ethereum was going up this way i reminded you guys to be very careful because my ksi indicator was red and my kcx indicator just turned cyan so usually there will be some selling all right guys so i hope that you like today's video it's a bit shorter than usual because there's not much much of the weekend and i think that right you guys want shorter video right don't you agree with me okay guys have a great day this is kel signing off see you tomorrow Bye bye